It's a big day in my garden. One of the favorite days in my gardening year. I'm finally getting my tomato plants in the ground in my raised beds. Join me today as I show you what I need to do to make that happen. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I have my tomatoes all laid out ready for planting. In this bed that's four feet wide and eight feet long, I'm putting eight plants in the ground. This year, it's extra special because I'm not only putting these eight tomato plants in the ground, but my friends Eli and Kate are doing the same. I've been growing outdoors in raised beds for years and years and years, but for them, it's something new. In fact, Eli, why don't you tell everybody about this? Scott, you know all about my garden. You've been on this journey with us. You know I'm a greenhouse grower for my tomatoes. To be honest, for the last 12 years, um, last year was the first time I attempted tomatoes outdoors. And I gave them a try over in the chili tree in pots. So this year, I plan to be more Scott. Hi, Scott. So, as you can see, um, you're a bit of a YouTube influencer there, Scott. You've influenced me to give it another try this year, but on a bigger scale. So you grow in raised beds and I grow in the greenhouse. And I've just set up a raised bed of tomatoes to see how I got on this year. Well, I appreciate the influence that I've had on you. I'm not sure if I can take credit for the influence on the extra facial hair, but I do like it. It's a nice look. For me, growing in raised beds is the norm. And so the thing that we're doing this year in these videos is showing how I think it's easy to grow in raised beds and difficult to grow in a greenhouse. While for Eli and Kate, it's easy to grow in a greenhouse and a little more difficult to grow outside. The most difficult thing I think I have with growing outside is just deciding which bed to put my tomatoes in. This year, I'm going with this bed. I think I'm also going to put some tomatoes in that bed. I don't know. I've got to try to figure out which other beds are best for my tomatoes. Oh, really? As we say in Scotland, you're poor wee soul. All that difficulty deciding where you were going to put your plants. Mate, this is it. This is my entire vegetable garden. Those three raised beds. So as well as having to overcome all the usuals with the weather and all that kind of thing, I've had to try and fit all of my usual growing into one less bed. Well, I'll admit that is one of the advantages of having a big garden. But to even things out, what we're going to do is put the same tomato varieties, for the most part, in a single bed. So in our videos to follow, I'll be focused on this bed, and Eli will be focused on that single bed in their vegetable garden. I'm all ready to go. I've got the plants laid out. One of the things I want to point out with both the way I do it and the way that Eli does it is we have our trellis set up from the beginning. I'm not a big fan of putting the plants in the ground and then trying to put the trellis over those plants because I've just broken too many plants doing that in the past. So we've got our trellises in place and we're ready to go. Eli, let's go ahead and kick it off with you. So I've got my gardener string, I've got my knee pad and we're going to get this bed planted up with the outdoor tomatoes. So these are the tomato varieties that I've decided to try growing outdoors this year in the bit of the grow along, kind of grow along fun type thing with Gardener Scott. So we've got varieties that were both grown in the greenhouse and in the garden. And we're just going to see what it's like because we've both got very different climates. So it's a big thing. I've always said, I don't think it's really doable to grow tomatoes outdoors in Scotland. I should have been a bit clearer. Obviously you can, and I've done it, and loads of people do. But I wonder, can I find a way to do it that's as productive as in my greenhouse? So I'm hoping this year's the year I'm going to work it out. 
We've repurposed this last raised bed. I have amended the soil in this bed, as always, the same as I do every year. And I've recently had the soil in this bed tested to make sure it's going to provide everything my tomato plants need. And it does, so that's excellent. I don't have to add any extras in. And I did the same thing. I amended this bed last fall and then did a soil analysis earlier this year so that I know exactly how good this bed is for growing tomatoes and it's very good. I shouldn't have to fertilize at all during the course of the growing season because the soil is so good. With the plants ready to go, I'll go ahead and take out the plant tag and just set it to the side. And then I'll go ahead and dig a hole for this pot to go into. And so with the hole dug, I'll go ahead and take the plant out of the pot. I like to clip off the lower branches because I am going to bury this a little bit deeper. Tease apart the roots a little bit, place it in the hole to just see if it's deep enough. I need to go a little bit deeper. And you can see that Eli is doing the same. And then I'll place the plant in the hole and firm the soil around the plant. And this is pretty typical with tomato planting. Eli's doing the same. I'll go ahead and put the plant tag with the plant that I just put in the ground. And now I'm going to move about 18 inches down the row for the next plant. And I'm gonna just keep doing the same thing. Ooh, earthworms. I love finding worms in my bed. That's one of the reasons that I amend so much with the organic matter. And I think one reason why my plants are happy and my bed is healthy is because of earthworms. So pinching off the bottom, removing the pot, placing it into the hole, firming everything around it, and then putting the plant tag back in place. Now I will point out, you may have noticed, that my plants aren't quite as sturdy and even as bushy as Eli's plants. I've been harding off for a couple weeks now, waiting for the weather to improve, and my tomatoes are in these smaller pots. A smaller pot will lead to a smaller plant. If you notice Eli's pots, they're quite a bit different they're bigger, which leads to bigger plants. So this side, these two here are black crim. These are big, really dark, almost purple tomatoes that quite a few folk online have been raving about and I'm quite excited to try. They're also a favourite of Gardener Scott's, so I'm quite excited to give these a go. Really hoping I can pull it off. But one of the things we did was we both looked at all the varieties available and looked at how many days it takes those to produce the fruit. So to go from small plants to ripe tomatoes, because that's really important. You need to know how many days that's going to take so that you know if you've got enough warm days in your garden for that to happen. Picking the right variety for your garden is a critical part of getting good tomatoes at the end of the season. And even though I'm in Colorado and Eli and Kate are in Scotland, we were able to find some varieties that should do well in both of our gardens. Not every garden is the same. And even as different as our gardens are, we can still find the short season varieties like the 60 and 70 day to harvest varieties. That's what most of these are. And that's what should give us the ability for all of us, Eli and Kate and me, to be growing the same varieties. 
what else are you doing when it comes to planting, Eli? Now, I'm also, I'm also having to do my best to try and get everything in a nice straight line because I'm using a trellising system called Florida Weave, which means instead of growing the tomatoes up these stakes or up strings, I'm actually going to be supporting them with horizontal strings. So they need to be kind of in a line, the best I can manage. It's actually not as easy as you think to plant in a straight line. This is obviously a skill I'm going to have to practice. That shows how the type of trellising system you use influences how you plant your tomatoes. Eli's using a horizontal system, which requires the plants to be lined up. And while mine look like they're pretty much lined up, I'm using a vertical trellising system. So it's not quite as important for my plants to be lined up because all of these are going up to my trellis and I don't have to worry about supporting them sideways. So Eli, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that kind of trellising that you're doing? I've come up with this kind of trellising system here to support them. Um, I'm using what I've discovered is called a Florida weave. I had never heard of it. A little bit of internet snooping, some fabulous YouTube videos out there. Hmm, I wonder whose those could be. So I'm now going to set up my first row of Florida weave and I'm only going to need to put in maybe two, yeah, I think two rows of string for just now. And the beauty of this is I can just keep adding the layers of string as I need them as the plants grow. And I'm just putting a length of string all the way down the row. And back again. So there's a bit of string on both sides of the plant. And that's the first line of support in place. Now it's not super tight, so there's a little bit of move for the plants. And I'm figuring that's not a bad thing because it lets them move in the wind a little and encourages them to put out strong roots to support themselves. But there's enough support as we go up that the wind's just not going to completely trash them because they're going to get really tall, obviously. My vertical system relies on these pieces of twine that I've hung to the top of this cattle panel trellis. And as I put my plants in, I attach them to this twine and then direct their growth upward. So it's a little bit different than the Florida weave. Even though I do have a bed that's set up for the Florida weave trellis, I actually prefer this way. It gives me more flexibility. I don't have to put everything into a straight line. As the plants grow, sometimes one side may be longer than another side, and I can train those longer branches vertically as I see fit. And I just think it's an easy way to grow my tomatoes. So I'm just starting on my second row now. Eli, where are you at? And why don't you tell everybody about the varieties that we're growing? So, one row done. Black Crim, Sun Gold, Sweet Millions, Golden Nugget. I'll go and get the other side done now. It should be no surprise to you that I've got Black Crim on the end, followed by the Sun Gold and the Sweet Million but I'm not growing gold nugget this year. So on this end, I have a Kellogg's breakfast and I have a black cherry. I live in a pretty windy region and I have to be concerned about protecting these young plants as they grow, particularly since they're a little leggier than Eli's tomatoes. So I'm using these tomato clips right from the beginning to attach these plants to the twine. This will help anchor the plants and keep them from breaking in a strong wind. There are a couple other steps. I'll mulch the bed, I'll water it well. You can see that in other videos. But for a comparison of just what we're doing, this is our video for how we're putting the plants in the ground 
outside. To see what we're doing in the greenhouse, go ahead and watch this video next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.